Hey guys, good afternoon, it's Callie. Today I am showing you my May mission inspiration page from the challenge from Mike Deacon. And I had a blast making this page based on the prompts that were given. And you guys can join in on the fun too. I'll show you all the prompts that were given and I'll also post the links to Mike's Facebook group below. He posts a new challenge each month and they're really a lot of fun. They force you to go outside of your comfort zone and create things that you wouldn't normally come up with. So I've been having a blast with it. If this looks like something you're interested in seeing how I came up with it, please stick around and I'll show you what I did. Okay guys, our first prompt is to apply gesso to our page. So you can see I've already taped it off and I have some wax paper back here to kind of protect it. I'm just going to use this Daler & Rowney Simply Acrylic Gesso. I believe I got this at Walmart. It does the job. And I'm just going to put a little bit in my palette dish and apply a nice coat of gesso. Always a good way to start. Dry. I have no idea, which is part of the fun for me, always trying to figure out where we're going to wind up with this page. No preconceived ideas at all. I try to go in kind of blind. I don't think about a focal point. I just let it unfold and kind of speak to me. So lay this down here. I'm going to let this dry. And we'll be back with the second prompt, which is to use three gelatos or water-soluble pigments. Okay, guys. See you in just a minute. Okay, guys, this is nice and dry. And this next prompt is to use three gelatos or water-soluble pigments. So I decided to use my Faber-Castell gel sticks and I'm going to use light blue, dark blue, and yellow. And I also have a water brush to activate them once I get them on the page. So I have, I don't use these very much at all and I should because they're cool. But I think they're they're not permanent, so they lift up if you put wet on top of them. And I think that's been a deterrent for me. But everything can change. And then we'll just activate them with the water brush. Nice and sunny yellow. Okay. Beautiful. Nice and rich. I say it every challenge, but that's one of the things that I really love about these prompts is that it encourages me to branch out with my art in ways that I don't think of on my own sometimes. So that's great. Still have no idea what my focal point's going to be. Okay, so. I'll do this and I think the next prompt is to blow paint through a straw which will be cool at least remember doing that as a kid in art class and yeah 
This is a lot of fun. I encourage you guys. I know a few people have already gone over and checked it out. I mean, Mike is very popular. He's got a lot of great videos. I love his aesthetic and uh, his style. So I say it every time, but if you haven't checked it out, check him out. Mike Deacon, Art, and then uh, Mission Inspiration is the group on Facebook. And as always, I will put the links below. So it's really pretty. And I love the texture. You can see the brush marks from the gelato underneath it, as well as that masking tape in the crease there. And I love that. Can't get enough texture for me. Okay, guys, I'm going to let this dry. And... I'll be back. I may take a uh, baby wipe and blend this out, or a rag, um, but I don't have that next to me right now, so that may happen off camera. And I'll see you back here when this is dry. See you in a few minutes. Okay, the next step is to blow paint with a straw. I apologize for the different angles in this video, you guys. I'm trying to work out my tripod camera situation, so bear with me. So for this prompt, I'm going to use one of my DecoArt Media misters, and the top of this is messed up, so I'm just going to use a little uh, pipette to get some of this out and apply it this way, and then we'll blow it with a straw. These are really nice, and this is the only um, one that I had a problem with the actual mister part spray bottle. Wow, you get lightheaded for sure, you guys. Wow, very, very cool. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry and we'll be back for the next step. Okay, so step four is to use a stencil with the medium of your choice. I'm going to be using some of this Punchinella. I got in some Happy Mail from Gina, as well as this Folk Art acrylic paint, and this is Fluorescent Glow. You knew I had to get some more purple in here. So I'm just going to put some in a palette. I have a clean makeup sponge. And I'm going to just randomly use this around the page. Beautiful. 
I try to do these challenges with you know, one step at a time and not try to think about where I'm going to go with the next step, if that makes any sense. I try not to have any preconceived ideas. I'm not loving that, but I'm not hating it either. A lot of times things will get covered up at the end. You think it's going to be one way, it turns out to be a different way. That's one of the many things I like about doing these challenges. Notice how I'm keeping the yellow, which to me kind of looks like a moon or a sun peeking through these hanging branches here. So again, whether it stays that way remains to be seen. And we'll just do a little more on the side. I do like it. I think it looks cool. What do you guys think? Okay, we're going to let this dry and come back with step five, which is to add texture with modeling paste. See you in a second. So our next step is to add texture with modeling paste. And I have my own homemade texture paste that I make out of Mod Podge and baby powder and acrylic paint. So I have some here in my palette dish and I debated on what stencil, if, I, if any, that I wanted to use. And I decided on some stars. So I'm just gonna add some stars at the top here and We'll see how that turns out. I also added a little bit of this Anita's all-purpose metallic paint and just this um, white for a little bit of a sparkle effect, hopefully. So we'll just spread this on. And... This will take a while to dry. But... I have a card here that might be a little bit easier. Sometimes it smears underneath if I'm not careful. Eh, doesn't matter, right? It's mixed media. And then one more side over here. I'm just going to go right in with the card. So we'll let this dry and be back with the next step, which is going to be add collage elements. So I'm going to have to break out some of my, uh, I have some bags with some pre-cut uh, pictures and stuff. We'll see what I come up with. So the next step is to add collage elements or fragments. I went through my stash, and I, this is what I came up with, you guys. I don't know. This is a piece of a postcard that I had done some texture paste on. So I thought I would put that. I have this. is a print of an original drawing that I did, and I just cut out around it. So I thought I would incorporate that somehow. This silhouette here. Not silhouette, sorry. <laughs> um, and then, of course, you can't get enough clocks, and I think I've definitely been influenced by Dee Dee Willingham this week. So I have that, and this was from a newspaper. And I have this really cool skull. So I thought I'd put that there. And then, of course, you, you can't have a mixed media page without some butterflies. So I just kind of thought 
about this. And she has her eyes closed, but there's a lot going on in her head. And I don't know. What do you guys think? Kind of funky. I'm going to use a combination of my Aileen's Tacky Glue and I have an Elmer's Glue Stick here to get this stuff down. Uh, I was going to use Mod Podge, but I want to be able to write on the page yet. So I may use Mod Podge to seal it when we're all done. So let me glue these down and I'll be back. And we'll take it from there. See you in a sec. Okay, so I got everything glued down and I had a change of plans with the butterflies. I got a little bit of glue on her chin and I thought, you know what? Her eyes are closed, so let butterflies come from her mouth. And I really like it. I think it was one of those happy accidents. I was debating on whether or not I wanted to put like a heart here on the clock or something, but I left it for now. And our next step that we're going to be going into is to play with pens or pencils. And I thought, at first I wanted to just keep this all black and white here. But I thought that maybe I could color her hair and things with some of my Inktense pencils. So that when they dry, they're permanent. And I think it would be cool just to do some of her dreadlocks and maybe this eye here. Um... I don't know. I may do the rainbow in the background. I could color the whole thing. We'll see. But um, that's what I'm going to do for now. So that will be step seven. And I'll see you back here when that's done. We're getting near the end. Okay, so I finished coloring everything in. And I did go ahead and use my Derwent Inktense. I initially had left the face white and I went back this morning and just colored it in. And again, the chin is having some bleed through from the cogs underneath, but it just adds a grungy look. And you can see I did add a heart. I went in with some of my Happy Mail scrap paper from, I think that came from Danielle and just added that. And I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I did like it when it was just the black and white, but it adds more depth with the color, so we're going to leave it at that. So that was that, and the next step is to add a border. And I debated on going in with maybe just some black paint around, which is kind of, you know, an easy way out. I like it. And then I saw, I have these in my pile. Um, these are incense packaging. And I really like this edge, so I think I'm going to cut out some of those. I actually did already do one, and it totally doesn't match anything else going on in the page, but that's what I like about it. And I, there's red in there, which brings out some of the colors, and I don't know. What do you guys think? So I may not go all the way around, maybe just top and bottom with this, and black on the sides. But I'm going to lay this down with uh, my Aliens Tacky Glue because it is a little stiff. And after I do that, I will come back and show you. And then we're going to add some words. And then the last step will be glitter. So we're almost done. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I added the border. And I don't think it's too much. Just top and bottom. I really like it. And I went around the edges here with my Faber-Castell Pit Pen, and I smudged it out with my water brush. I also went around the clock with this, as well as my um, Signo Uniball in white. And I think with the red heart, it really gives it an Alice in Wonderland kind of a feel. So the next step that we're going to do is to use some verbiage somewhere. And I went back and forth. I was going to use the words daydream believer that I had done on another journal page. But I decided to, the, the owl really made me think of, obviously, wisdom. And I like the fact that she's not speaking and her eyes are closed, but her third eye is open. And there's all this other stuff going on around her. So I think that's her soul speaking. So we're going to go with Soul Wisdom. And I'm going to glue these down and then we'll outline them again with the Faber-Castell and smudge it out. 
And when that's done, the last step is just to add some um, glitter. So I'll see you back here when the words are glued on and we're ready to sparkle. Okay, so I colored in these words with my Derwent Inktense pencils and glued those down. And that was that for that step. And the next step says to use stickles, glitter glue, or add gems. So I'll get some glitter and some stickles and I'll be right back. How many crazy angles can this video have? <laughs> Bear with me, you guys. Okay, step 10 was to use stickles, glitter glue, or add gems. And I decided to use some glitter glue. I used my DecoArt Craft Twinkles in silver. And I just put some on my finger and very lightly touched up the stars. And whatever I had left over, I just kind of placed in the background. So that's that. And then for a final step, and look, I'm really loving how this came out, you guys. I know it was hard for you to see it before. But for a final step, I'm just going to go over it with some decoupage, um, matte media to seal it. And when that dries, I will take some pictures and insert them so you guys can see. So, yeah, this is what I'm going to use. Good old decoupage. And I use this for everything. So that's that. I hope this has inspired you. Again, I so appreciate you bearing with me as I'm working out my filming issues. Um, but I appreciate the love and support and whatever constructive criticism you may have. Don't forget to check out Mike Deacon's group. I'll put all the links below. And I hope you guys are having a great day. Take care. I'll see you very soon.